Yes, that is a pet duck. Oh my god. Can I can I just get a picture real quick? Okay, so who wants to talk numbers? So, today was my big dyno day, and it was the first time that I dynoed the car with the supercharger set up, and basically everything that I've been working on up until this moment. And this was a Mustang dyno, so it was, everyone calls it the heartbreak dyno, but uh, I mean, Realistically, I'm happy with the numbers that we came up with. Definitely not what I was hoping for, but again, it's on a Mustang Dyno, so it's it's a little bit different than like a uh, like a Dyno Jet or a uh, the other Dyno Meter is that the other uh, 4G made. As we can see here, I made 248 wheel horsepower and 221.3 foot pounds of torque, so 248.8. Uh, to the wheels. That's on a Mustang Dyno. That's better than stock Evo. So that's a, that's pretty good. If you were to configure those numbers on a Dyno Jet, it would be about 15 to 20 percent more. So on a Dyno Jet, I probably would have made around 285, 290-ish. That's pretty awesome. I mean, I I almost met my goal, and I think we would have definitely met it, and possibly would have made more power if the car didn't start leaning out at 5500 RPMs. Basically what my tuner Brandon did was the car was running rich for a little bit and he took some fuel out in the top end. So around four, uh, around 5500 RPMs in fourth gear it started leaning out to like 13.5 air fuel ratios and the car started bucking on the dyno. So I can definitely see uh, where improvement needs to be made. So. 250 wheel horsepower in a Mustang Dyno on a boosted 2.4 4G69. Stock bottom end, I'm very happy with the results. Um, like I said, if fuel wasn't an issue, I think we could have made more power, maybe in the 260, 265 range. With that being said, here's clip one of first dyno pull of three. This was fourth gear, and it was going to about 5,500 RPMs. So after that, Alex made some adjustments for the second pole. He uh, adjusted to where the dyno would cut off at for RPM wise on my car to 5800. And this was the result.
So on the third pole, uh, we were making a little bit less power. I told them uh, to go to third gear because the gearing ratios for third and fourth were fourth gear was 1.03, and then in third gear the gearing ratio was 1.364, I believe. So I mean, not too far off what fourth gear would have been the best pole out of all of them, which it was. It made the highest horsepower, but. Uh, and it was the most accurate, but third gear would have made more power, but again, being on the third pole, after the car had already heated up and my manifold was glowing red, uh, it, was, it just was making less power. wheel horsepower at 61, 6200 RPMs, and then maximum torque was 221.3 at 6000 RPMs, which isn't bad, so I'm happy with that. And you can see my graph here, uh, ignore the air fuel ratio because when he had it plugged into the OBD2 OBD sensor, it's, it's not logging accurately, obviously, because, you know, it's a muscle shop and the tech that they use isn't the same, so... Air fuel ratios are saying they're in the 19s, and obviously that's not true. But look at this curve. This curve is awesome. Boost, 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 and then look at that. It's just peaking and peaking and peaking. It stops right about there. And that's where we meet about 248 horsepower. And then it just kind of ducks off because the car started bucking as it leaned out. And just for shits and giggles, right before I was about to go up, <laughs> They decided to put on the uh, the first generation Viper that was at the shop. Way to steal my thunder. Anyways, this Viper made 1,563 horsepower on one pull. Check it out. Anyways, thank you so much guys for all who was supporting me. I know it wasn't exactly the numbers that we wanted to see, but then again, this is also a Mustang dyno, so on a dyno jet we would have seen more close to the goal, which was 300 wheel horsepower. Dyno jet numbers would have been 280, 285, maybe 290-ish, and even so, it probably would have been in the 300s if the fueling wasn't an issue, so I'm definitely going to have to uh, reflash the ECU, put the fuel back in the top end where it was missing so it won't lean out at whatever RPMs it was at. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and follow me and my car at NoLag4G on Instagram or athornton 2009 on Twitter. Thanks again so much, guys, and don't forget, drive it like it has 100 horsepower per cylinder. Thanks, guys.